Hi everyone and welcome to our first official digital live company chat. I am super excited to get started today. Um, my name is Destiny Frank and I will be the host for your next for the next couple of weeks and I'm here with my co-host Eric. Uh, Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, Destiny. It's great to be here. And who do we have today? Yeah, today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Crawford. He is the CEO and CTO of Interplay with uh, over two decades of experience in the technical and project engineering fields, including experience with companies like Ford and GM, among others. And Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mark, so much for being here. I was really excited to get to interview with you today because I'm I'm working with you this summer as as your intern, so that that's been a great experience. Uh, would you mind uh, for the audience kind of giving a brief background of uh, your experience, uh, where you went to school, what what did you study? Okay, so wow, where, where I went to school seems like so many moons ago, but um, I went to the at the time it was the university. Uh, of Missouri uh, Rala, but now it's the um, Missouri University of Science and Technology. And so I actually studied mechanical engineering and I got a bachelor's there. And then I wanted to learn more uh, about uh, manufacturing and robots and software and engineering. So I stayed and got a master's there. Uh, and right after uh, completing my degrees uh, in Missouri, I came up here and started working in Michigan for Ford Motor Company. Oh, that's really great. Uh, what made you want to start your company here in Michigan? Sure. So uh, I'll give maybe a little bit more about my background and then how that led me to starting, say, my company here. So uh, working at Ford, I stayed there for around 18 years and I had an opportunity to work in uh, engineering and doing uh, a lot of vehicle engineering, working on new products, had a chance to work on the launch of new products, uh, as well as spending a great deal of time working in a field called vehicle dynamics, which was really cool. Uh, during that time, I actually learned an awful lot about computers and about software and about doing computer simulations. And so um, towards the end of my career though at Ford, a lot of activities started happening around, say, something that we call active safety technology, which was kind of the precursor to autonomous vehicles. And so uh, when this activity started to happen, there was a lot of buzz in the industry. Um, I decided that I really wanted to shift my career and focus on automated driving technology. So at Ford, they gave me an opportunity where I transitioned from doing a lot of vehicle dynamics and vehicle engineering work over into Ford Research. And there I was one of the first engineers that was working on Ford's autonomous vehicle project. And those were the early days. So this was around 2012. Uh, and it was a very exciting time. There was very few of us working on the project. Uh, and so uh, there were around four, four Ford engineers working on the project and a bunch of grad students from the University of Michigan. So it was an awesome time. We were building uh, the software, we were building the prototype vehicle, uh, and we actually got uh, Ford's first autonomous vehicle operating. And so from there, things really started to accelerate, lots of excitement in the industry, uh, a lot more people were added to uh, the project. Uh, and at that point, I, I thought I, I had uh, learned an awful lot at Ford and I wanted to try something else. So I actually packed up my bags and uh, started to work at a company called Great Wall Motor Company. And I moved to China and for four years, I actually worked uh, in China working on the same type of technology. And there I was the chief engineer for autonomous driving systems at Great Wall. That was an amazing experience. And I learned so much when it came to engineering and cultures and meeting people. Um, and I started getting ideas in terms of uh, new concepts for businesses. And so, uh, when I felt my time was up at Great Wall, I decided to start my own company, which was Interplay. And I took a lot of those concepts and ideas that I learned uh, from my time at Ford and my time at Great Wall and merged them all into this new business uh, where we work to develop, say, a very smart logistics uh, platform that uses a combination of software, uh, services, and robotics in order to do something new and interesting in the industry. 
That's amazing. You seem to have a lot of experience mechanical engineering and uh, AI and robotics. Uh, could you go more into your company Interplay? Uh, what kind of products are you creating, the software, and also your robotics that you're developing? Sure. So at Interplay, uh, we decided that we wanted to take a little bit different approach when it came to, say, um, automated driving. And we wanted to focus on logistics. And when you take a look at the companies that are doing automated driving now, you see that there's been a shift in the industry. So a lot of people were thinking about let's move people around. And now in terms of the first applications of the technology, it's more about moving, say, products around. And so uh, with that thought, we wanted to focus our, our company in that particular area, but we also wanted to make sure that we could help our customers as much as possible, as soon as possible. So that meant that not only did we want to work on our automated driving technology, but we also wanted to work on our software. And our software uh, actually does something that's called route optimization. So you can think of it as if you have a lot of places that you need to go, you have to make a lot of deliveries and you have a lot of vehicles, how do you decide which vehicle to actually deliver what product, you know, how are you going to get your pizza from this location to say your customer's location when you have hundreds of them to deliver. So that's what route optimization does. And so it's the software that's in the background that tries to figure out the most optimal way in order to move these vehicles around to make these deliveries. So that is our software that we're working on now that we're actually part, we're working with customers integrating it into their systems. And it was an excellent way for us to engage with our customers now in this very important role for logistics. And what we do then we decided to that we would build upon that relationship to eventually get to the point of uh, integrating robotics into our customers businesses. So it's been very helpful for us It's the way that we think about the world. We help our customers now, and we're gonna help them in the future when we deploy our delivery robots. Well, that sounds like a really exciting business. And um, I know when I was, when you were first explaining it to me, I was really fascinated with the technology and I still am. I think it's really cool. Um, speaking of which, uh, Alex, Eric, do we have, uh, sorry, do we have uh, any uh, questions in the chat? Yeah, we do got a couple questions. Um, so the first one from Bud asks, it's kind of a double question. What do you see as the future of autonomous vehicles and will it be uh, full autonomy or more assisted driving? Sure. Well, you know, I think of automated driving as a spectrum. And I think in the future, uh, in the near term, uh, we'll, we'll definitely see uh, a little of both, right? And so, uh, I think there's an awful lot of good that, uh, say, active safety systems, partial autonomy can do in terms of helping to reduce accidents and save people lo people's lives, even if it's not full autonomy. Uh, now, uh, eventually, I think there will be uh, an opportunity in order to have full autonomy. And how that shapes out, I think, is going to be really interesting to see. Um, I think one of the hardest things about, say, autonomy is just trying to figure out where is your technology robust enough in order to operate safely and uh, that actually has a pretty good business model for it as well. So from that perspective, we'll see, and we're starting to see already where you see fully autonomous systems being integrated uh, into commerce but they usually have a narrow, what we call operational design domain, meaning where can this vehicle actually operate safely? So it will take some time. It could take a number of years, maybe even a decade or so before we can actually truly have vehicles that can drive anywhere at any time uh, without so many limitations. But I think we'll have plenty of time where there'll be this broad spectrum of technologies uh, that will provide good to society. So just to follow up on that question, your uh, your product that you're looking at creating is uh, would be fully autonomous, correct? It's a driverless vehicle. Yeah, that's correct. And maybe we, we could talk a little bit more about um, you know the type of vehicles that we're working on. And so starting out, we're taking our automated driving technology and we're putting that into kind of sidewalk and pedestrian delivery robots. So these are robots that you may have seen before operating maybe on college campuses. And so we have a special way that we are actually developing our robots. So they're more collaborative, they're more modular, 
right? Uh, and that's because we, we're kind of coming from a systems perspective. But our first autonomous vehicles are really going to be those that are going to travel in probably up to around four or five miles per hour on uh, sidewalks and pedestrian areas. Now, eventually, part of our plan is that we want to build upon that technology and then put them into, say, on road vehicles. And then we have a plan in terms of how we want to do that to uh, increase, say, uh, where they can operate their operation design domain, and also uh, we'll have different mobility applications for them. But we're starting with small delivery robots, and then eventually we'll get to on-road vehicles. Yeah, it sounds like that's a natural progression because they, they have things like that in warehouses, I know, but putting them out into public is its own beast. Um, yes. So Alessandra asks, how did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Well, uh, that's a, a good question. I've always had the entrepreneurial uh, bug. And so I can remember back and uh, when I was in uh, high school and one of my uh, first jobs was actually going kind of door to door selling pots and pans. And so this is before I decided to go and uh, learn all about engineering. But I tell you what, I learned some very valuable lessons uh, doing uh, that type of sales and, and working with people and trying to get them to buy my awesome pots and dishes and things of that nature. So um, I've always uh, had uh, the bug in terms of wanting to have a business. And one of the things that inspired me now uh, in terms of launching this type of business uh, is that I have a real passion for technology and I have a certain vision that I want to accomplish. One of the best ways to, to, to accomplish your vision is to start your own business. Uh, no one's really going to fight for your idea like you are. And having your own business is one of the best ways to go out there and try to make it a reality. Jamie asks, uh, this is my last question for right now. Jamie asks, what do you enjoy most about working in robotics and AI? Uh, that is a, a really good question. Um, there are so many wonderful aspects to uh, working in robotics. Um, it's actually one of the main reasons why I decided to become an engineer in the first place. Uh, and so um, I, I think that one of the things that makes me uh, really happy and is really gratifying is actually not just working on one robot, but actually working on a, a collaboration of robots uh, to do something that really hasn't been done before. And so in our case, we're thinking about, OK, cool delivery robots that can drive in sidewalks and pedestrian areas. But, you know, we're coming up with, with ways in order to make them collaborate with autonomous vehicles and do some cool th things that haven't been done before. And so the thing that I'm really excited about is when you have these autonomous systems that then figure out how to collaborate and do something really cool. All right, thank you. I'll pass it back over to you, Destiny. That's really good. I uh, That's really great. I don't think I've ever heard that story about the pots and pans, but I really liked your advice about starting the business. I thought that was really cool. Um, speaking of starting a business, what has been like the highs and low of starting a business over this past year? Okay, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about this uh, the other day, and um, you know, there's a really interesting time when you're starting a new business at the very beginning where there's so much potential and possibility and you're just in love with the idea. <laughs> and, you, and, and you have a bit of time where you can just have the luxury of just thinking about it and nurturing it and building up your idea. And then reality sets in and you have to do the work. And, and that's the hard thing is taking your wonderful idea uh, that you've been working on and trying to figure out how are you going to bring it to the light of day. And that takes an unbelievable amount of work, of cooperation and talking with people in order to take your idea uh, to reality. Uh, and so high points, in love with the idea, love it, right? Uh, the low point is, it is a sometimes it can be a very lonely journey to make that idea come to reality. And sometimes some of the people that you start out with that you know believe in your idea, they don't always stay with you. And sometimes they go off and they do other things. And so when those times happen, then that is a really important time for an entrepreneur to really reflect, to make sure that you've really committed to, to the idea to yourself. And it's a gut check uh, in terms of whether or not you're going to continue when other people start to say leave and go off and do other things. 
And so those can be some of the loneliest times, I think, for an entrepreneur. But if you're really passionate about your idea, then you'll stay with it and you'll keep going. That's amazing. So your great idea, your big idea was the robotic technology. But I know you're not starting off with the making of the robots. Uh, What is your process of kind of developing the design of the robots and producing the software and getting it out on the field ready to go? Sure. Uh, Well, I think one of the important things that uh, we pay close attention to is this concept of systems. And uh, there's a whole field of systems engineering. And so uh, if there are any engineers out there, I really encourage you to learn about it. Um, you know, back in the old days, they didn't necessarily teach a lot of systems engineering when I got my bachelor's. So this is something that I learned through the course of my career. And I think it's really important. Um, and so taking a systems approach and thinking about uh, how one component needs to work with another component, right? You start to realize that the, the value of the entire system is, you know, greater than just the sum of the parts. And, and that's really important when you're trying to build something that's, that um, is new and can be really exciting. You don't want to over-engineer uh, one component, over-engineer another component, and then you forget about the entire system in terms of what is it it's really supposed to do. So uh, at Interplay, we think an awful lot about systems, about how they should work, and we focus on the systems part. Uh, and then we start to think about how the other components will help the system to be successful. Um, So being an entrepreneur takes a lot of leadership. Uh, What would you say is your leadership style or what have you learned about leadership and developed into your own style? Sure. Well, um, what I learned about leadership, I learned from my kids, I think. And so um, I have uh, four kids and uh, three boys, one girl. And um, I I think you learn an awful lot uh, in terms of uh, setting an example. And and so um, I I think it's really important. I try to set an example for my kids and I I, I try to set an example for the people in my company uh, in terms of uh, I don't ask anyone to do anything that I wouldn't do. And I'll do anything uh, in terms of making sure that the company is successful. And, And that includes everything from coding, uh, to uh, meeting with customers, to cleaning toilets, you know, it's whatever is required in order to uh, move the company forward, to try to get a little bit closer to the dream. Um, and so I, I think as a leader, uh, it's really important that people understand that you're committed, uh, that people uh, understand that you have integrity, and that you respect people. And uh, I invest in the people in my company, and I, I hope you know they they understand that. And uh, I, I think uh, that part is really important because um, you know really what is a company without people? And if you're not investing uh, in, in in the people, then um, I think you're going to have a lot of uh, you may get some short term gains, but you're going to have a lot of long long term problems. Mm-hmm. I think that's great advice, invest in people and create relationships. Uh, Working with you this summer, I've definitely, like, you've done such a good job, and I really appreciate working with you. Um, I appreciate that. uh, Before we leave, uh, Eric, do we have any uh, other questions in the chat? Sure, we got a couple more. Um, You touched on this a little bit earlier, but Sufan Q asks, uh, we all know the impact of the pandemic on businesses. How did it impact your business? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're startup, so we're forming our company and we're trying to establish our culture. Uh, we have team members all over the world, actually. And so that part is really exciting. Technology has really been a key enabler for that. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the pandemic, though, has has really changed how I thought about, say, forming a team and thought about how we're going to collaborate. Um, and so now, Uh, We put a lot more emphasis, I do anyway, uh, in terms of collaborative tools uh, and um, also doing meetings like this uh, in terms of using Zoom or, you know, uh, Skype or what have you uh, is, you know, my doorway to my entire organization. Right. And so uh, we have, as I mentioned, team members in India and across the United States. 
And I only meet with them through uh, technology. So the pandemic has, we're a technology company and it has forced us to leverage technology to the fullest in terms of just doing our day-to-day -day business. Um, I had a one-off question, a personal question. I was wondering, do you have a city in mind uh, when you think about your product that you'd like to start with? Okay. Um, well, we have some projects that we're working on right here in Michigan, and we have some um, partners that we're really lucky to have working with us and who have uh, invited us to participate in some pilot projects. So we're planning, hopefully by the beginning of next year in order to deploy right here in the Detroit metropolitan area. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll keep you guys updated on, uh, hopefully you'll see Interplay robots running around here soon. <laughs> I'm hoping to see those guys rolling around. I got one more question from Alessandra and uh, just to put a nice little bow on it, what is the best advice you received in your career? Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, that's another good question. These are some really good questions. Um, uh, I, I think um, some some really good advice that that I've gotten, and um, you know, is that you have to be in charge of your own career. And I, I think many times, and you know, maybe we're not taught this in school. Um, maybe we don't have mentors, right? But sometimes going to work for a company, there's an expectation that everything's going to be laid out for you. In terms of okay they'll tell you do this do this do this and you'll end up you know wherever it is that you want to go uh if you know where you want to go that's not really the case i, I think what was important for me was that i realized that no i'm responsible for my career and if i want to go someplace then i need to make sure that i put uh say the necessary things into place so that i can get to my final destination and no one's going to look out for my career more than i will Thank you. That's, that's some really good advice. And I think uh, a lot of people are slowly learning that through their uh, work experience as well. So uh, back to you, Destiny. Uh, well, I wish we really had a lot more time to ask questions, but I think that's a great note to end on. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for your time and for your great advice. And thank you for everyone for uh, joining us for our first live. Uh, join us again next Thursday at six o'clock uh, we'll, for another digital live and also keep an eye out on our Instagram, LinkedIn and our Facebook page. We're going to be posting announcement posts, so you definitely want to keep up to date with that. Uh, so thank you so much and I hope you guys all have a great night and I will see you next week. Thank you.